Yes, so many cops are on the take. What do you expect when they use tear gas and tanks? Whether in a car or on a horse, cops don't mind using excessive force. Bad cops, bad cops. What you gonna do? Bad cops, bad cops. What you gonna do? Bad cops, bad cops. What you gonna do? Bad cops, bad cops. Bad cops, bad cops. This is filmed in front of a live studio audience. Yeah. <laughs> So uh, this is interesting. I mean, it's not quite bad cops, but it is kind of, I just caught bad cops, but cops actually being held accountable, which is like extraordinarily thing to happen in this country. Um, so um, so I want to share the story that Dr. Regis brought to my attention, because a lot of times when cops get held accountable, it doesn't make the news. Um, what usually makes the news is like a crazy mentally ill pe- person doing something to people, but not like, you know, a supposedly competent um, servant for the government. Doing stuff I mean, people. you know, That's police crazy. officers can be uh, crazy and mentally ill too. <laughs> but I want to share this this crazy story that um that's pretty wild. So Cron four. <laughs> so I want to play this clip. I want you guys to s- 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 get, hear the tone of these reporters and see what you get from this story. Strong reactions are coming in from all sides regarding charges being dropped against a man accused of Cron. resisting arrest and assaulting a San Francisco police officer. On force has Zeke Medune has the story. San Francisco District Attorney Chase Abudin has decided there will be no Chase charges filed against 41-year-old Sergio Lugo, who was arrested back on February 17, 2021, following a physical wow. altercation with San Francisco police. He wow, really beat the, the shit out of the underside of the cop's boots. <laughs> SFPD officials say Lugo was detained by undercover officers. Those boots are expensive. Somebody's got to pay. Crimes in Noe Valley. And he decided to walk away. SFPD investigators say during the struggle to detain him, he used a sharp object, wounding an officer. Cron 4 received this statement from the DA's office regarding the decision Cron. to drop the charges. Quote, we carefully reviewed all the evidence in the case, including statements, surveillance, the fact that the officers were not wearing body-worn cameras, inconsistencies in police officer statements, the fact that Mr. Lugo... I, I get really tired of, like, the media just repeating what the fuck cops say, and then you have this kind of statement come out from the district yeah. attorney's office. And, and it was really funny. It was really yeah. funny. Yeah. How many times have we seen in movies where the cops, they gather together, let's get a story straight. <laughs> well, let's get a story straight. And it's like uh, the officers, uh, they coached each other and they still lost the game. Like we're supposed to believe this guy who looks like he's like about to die uh, was the incredible hope with these cops. That guy um, looks like a a very poor drawing by, a, by an eight-year-old. <laughs> um. And that's what happens when you beat up cops, uh, the, the soles of the cops' boots with your face. He had a sharp object. He walked away. Like, I want to just rewind. Mind. To, I got to rewind. I got to rewind to how he told his story. He walked away, and all of a sudden, he attacked him with a knife. Like, that makes no sense to me. I, I got to listen to that again. He didn't sorry. even say a knife. 17, 2021, <laughs> following a physical altercation with San Francisco police. This is a photo of Sergio Lugo taken after the incident. SFPD officials say Lugo was detained by undercover officers conducting surveillance for burglary crimes in Noe Valley when he decided to walk away. SFPD investigators say during the struggle to detain him, he used a sharp object, wounding an officer. He walked away because he didn't know who the fuck was detaining him. <laughs> hey, I'm not even I'm not part of your investigation. I'm oh. lying my goddamn business. <laughs> who the fuck are you people? <laughs> undercover oh. cops. Cron oh Four received this statement from the DA's office regarding the decision to drop the charges. "Quote: We carefully reviewed all the evidence in the case, including statements, surveillance, the fact that the officers were not wearing body-worn cameras, inconsistencies in police officer statements, the fact that Mr. Lugo was behaving lawfully when stopped by police." Oh, that's a big it was one. Clear that this was not a provable case. Unquote. In response to the district attorney dropping the charges, San Francisco police chief Bill Scott is quoted saying, I'm disappointed with the district. How? Hey, I saw that. 
You saw that propaganda. You know how angry this man looks, and then they pick, they today. switch to like I'm disappointed. They're happy. <laughs> Yo, we saw that. that. I was just staring at the hairline. I don't even them. know how he gets a hairline like that. When the barbers that know how to do that, they ain't letting him in the barber shop. So let's hear what he says about uh, what they say. Pointed with the district attorney's decision in this case, Mr. Lugo resisted arrest and violently assaulted our officers, injuring one of them with an exacto knife. These kinds of attacks are unacceptable and shouldn't be tolerated by our criminal justice system. When they are, it sends a dangerous message that emboldens criminals to use violence and not just against police Yeah, officers. pause it. Pause, 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 pause. He was oh, so put that back up on the screen. Put that back up on the screen. He was in charge? I don't understand. Was he charged for anything that they were just use? Yeah. Uh, he, he, it, but all the charges were dropped. So, 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 <laughs> just, let's just look at this. Let's look at this. Let's look at this, okay? Isn't this what we've been saying when officers of the law are not held to account for what they do in uniform. Like, look at this. He says these, and, and the thing is, if we just read this without the context, right? Yeah. This should encompass everybody in uh, possible situations of conflict. Okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna read this without all the other stuff. Yeah, these kinds of attacks are unacceptable and shouldn't be tolerated by our criminal justice system. When they are, it sends a dangerous message that emboldens people to use violence. End quote. And that goes for police officers. That goes for civilians. We have these, and the thing is, we the, the, these kinds of attacks, that guy wasn't attacking anybody. He was walking down the motherfucking street, right? So... Yeah, they, oh, uh, he violently assaulted our officers. Yeah, like we think that for like that one guy who's minding his own business just just decided, you know what? I'm going to go one v four. I'm just going to go one v four today, right? Go that doesn't make three, any I'm gonna sense. Fight, I'm going to fight three guys. <laughs> I think there were four of them. No, so so apparently it was uh, well, any apparently it was two officers uh, who approached him and said they wanted to search him. And he said, no, um, I don't know who you people are. And you know that is his Fourth Amendment right. Yeah. So without verbal okay. warning, the two officers grabbed his arm and kicked his legs and pinned him to the ground. And then a third officer showed up and decided to kick his about 15 to 25 times. Yeah. Um, yeah. He admitted to a punching him or striking him 20 to 25 times. Yeah. Yeah. So he's minding his motherfucking business, right? He's not committing any crimes. They're not wearing any body cameras. They're throwing them to the ground. What what kind of attack are you talking about, sir? Officer, please tell me, Mr. Chief Guy. Happy Chief Guy. With, right? With the, with the wild headline. You don't, you don't deserve that crispy hairline. <laughs> to use violence and not just against police officers. We absolutely agree with the chief statement. The president of the union that represents San Francisco. Oh, of course you agree with it. We should be allowed to do whatever you want to do to people. Violent person go without any form of, uh, you know, consequences. You know, it's, it's he should what? let. He wasn't violent. <laughs> decide you attacked him. Whether or not, um, you know, there, there was enough evidence. San Francisco public defender Mano Raju views it differently. It is absurd that Mr. Lugo spent a day in jail on this case and dismissing it was absolutely the right and legally sound thing to do. Anyone expressing disappointment that this case was dismissed should be instead answering for this gross display of police brutality. Hazik Madhu. Absolutely. And that, and that is an underpaid guy. Probably that's an attorney probably making $60,000 a year. And those cops are making criminally underpaid, right? And those cops are making six digit salaries out there. This right? beating up people. And, and, and he's the one that's grandstanding on the grave of your case, the case that you never had. And it reminds me of Rodney King. You know how many charges of assault on a police officer Rodney King got? <laughs> All of the cops. You know, you know how you know how many fucking counts of assault on a police officer they charged him with, not knowing that somebody was videotaping the whole thing. 
fucking gross. So yeah, we can't allow you can't allow these violence attacks on these police officers by people who are just walking down the street. Wow, that's so violent. We don't like the way he was minding his own business. That was a really violent way to mind his own business in the presence of our officers. Yeah, it's Fuck confusing. his Fourth Amendment rights against unreasonable search and seizure. Yeah, it's confusing that we couldn't just beat this guy up and get away with it. I don't understand how we can get not. Get and away what with I want to know is where where are all the constitutionalists on this too? Where yeah. where are all those guys? It's like crickets, the keepers, like, right? Yeah, oath keepers. <laughs> Now he's he's a little too brown for the old people to show up, and so I want to share. So San Francisco seemed like it's kind of this hippie, magical place, but I want to keep on going down the line. The police so is still the fucking same. Yeah, so I want to go to this. There's still, there's still, there's still uh, descendants of slave catchers. It doesn't matter if you're in a liberal city or you know one of these podunk towns where they're you know chasing black runners through the uh, through the neighborhood and then thinking you know ain't nothing to see here. And actually share the video of people of the guy dying. Thinking yeah, because like, there's nothing to see thing. here. We just killed an agger. Yeah. So I want to share this next thing that happened. This happened last year. Another cop was charged. This time he actually killed a person, unfortunately. Police um, officer now facing voluntary manslaughter charges for a shooting that turned deadly. Does not voluntary manslaughter sound a lot like the murder? Now, Andrea, this is only the second time an SFPD officer has faced charges like this. Damn, because <laughs> San Francisco police officers never do anything wrong. Kenneth Shaw, a San Francisco police officer. At this point, it is only the second time in the history of the department that this has happened. This is the encounter in January 2017 that has SFPD officer Kenneth Shaw facing voluntary manslaughter charges. Officers were called to the Ocean View home on accusations of Sean Moore, a man with known mental illness, violating a restraining order. Eight minutes after arriving and with body-worn camera video of Moore trying to evade baton swings and telling officers to get off his property, Chaw fired two rounds. <laughs> what? The, why are they making it seem like he was the bad guy? <laughs> Yo, son. Whatever. Striking Moore in the abdomen and groin. This was a very minor event. If the police officer had de-escalated, he wouldn't have had this situation. He created a confrontation, uh, created a conflict, and then the police the officers. One of the colloquial, one of the colloquialisms to describe them, uh, they call them peace officers. Is not one of the is not one of the terms that are used to describe their professional capacity. Peace officers. I just love how the reporter is trying to make it seem like stop hitting me with the batons was like an aggressive thing. For him to say <laughs> yeah he's like get off my property like Stop and the thing is, if, if it was a white guy shouting yeah. that at the police people would be yeah. like yeah don't tread on me yeah stop hitting me please 20 and the autopsy yeah. said his cause of death was related to the bullet that struck his colon oh In really release d.a chase boudin said this like it's so crazy that a copy in charge is so foreign to like the media that is like it sounds like they're describing like some weird like space down and landing. Like. His death was related to the bullet that went into his <laughs> colon. Like it just magically materialized in his gut. We, we're not going to say that the officer, you know, did any violence toward the man, but the officer did a couple of things. And then one thing led to another. And then they put a bullet in his nutsack and in his belly. <laughs> Like, how did that, where did that bullet come from? It's about the charges. We're well, not charging with murder. Like it's voluntary manslaughter. And here we go again. Flagrant disregard of their training. It denigrates the hard work of other police officers and shatters the trust our community. Wow, look at this. Look at this truth telling right here. I, I just have a moment of sound. Someone I really actually... wish that other police officers could really truly understand this concept. It denigrates the hard work of other police officers. Let me say something. I want to say something here. When we see the George Floyd issues and and, and, and these I, kind and of and things, right? the Michael Browns, I want cops to disappear off the face of the earth. But the fact that you have someone in this planet saying the truth about why people don't like them is, is I have to give credit. You know, yeah, absolutely. Like, yeah, but you know, this is a talking point that you normally hear from the right. 
And yeah. they're actually right on this when they say there are over 10 million arrests that are performed in this country on a yearly basis. And we hear, you know, on the 24 hour news cycle about one or two of them a year. And then it, it's, it, it makes us think that all police officers are doing it when it's clearly not the case. Now, yeah. Messiah would we'll make the that. case. Even Messiah would seen. make the case yeah. that there should not be 10 million interactions to begin with. And I also yeah. agree with that as well. Right. Even there should not be like, 10 million interactions. <laughs> right. <laughs> but, you know, we do kind of hold on to these, you know, ultra negative uh, outcomes. And then we try to slather all police officers with it. And that's unfair. Right. But if you're a police officer and you think that the that the that the agenda around police officers, you know, it's so unfair the way that they categorize us. Did you need to be standing up next to chest, you know, chest of Boudin? You need to be standing up uh, next to the, you know, the DA in San Francisco and other places where they hold police officers accountable and say, yo, when you fuck that guy up, you make me look bad. Now I got somebody resisting arrest that might not have resisted if not for your stupid actions. And now I could get injured. I can be charged. They're not even thinking of it like that. They're thinking, well, it doesn't matter if there's any wrongdoing. We're just going to stand by our guys. Like in the other case, um, the, the, the district attorney says we looked at surveillance. There were no body cameras. The officers couldn't get their fucking story straight. But we looked at all of these things in addition to the fact that the dude was not breaking any laws when he was accosted. Like the district attorney just laid out. Point after point after point after point after point. What and do we hear from the police see, chief and, and the, the district chief? Attorney, the same tired, regurgitated nonsense. Well, you know, we stand by the fact that we didn't do anything wrong. Then the civilian is always wrong and we're always right. And we never do anything wrong. And everybody else is the enemy. They just laid out all of the evidence. And that's still the story you stick to. And then you wonder why we don't trust you. Okay. And and most of the time, district attorneys are saying the same shit that the police union, that the, the police chief is saying. They say, they're saying the same shit. This is like a rare, rare shit right here. Obviously, it is rare because it's the second cop in San Francisco history to be charged. So, places in law enforcement. The city of San Francisco paid out a $3.25 million civil claim to the Moore family, and a judge ruled that the officers were acting outside of the scope of their duties. This is Sean Moore's mother, Cleo, during a 2017 town hall following the shooting. And my son was in the house, already had two bullet holes, one in his stomach, one in his groin, and they kept saying to me, my son is okay. Is that the way you treat the citizens of San Francisco? If the cop had gotten shot in the stomach and in the groin, they would be making it like, oh my God, it, it's Armageddon. Yeah, we need tanks, we need helicopters, we need terminators, we need nuclear weapons, you know, like oh, we man. need to go get Israel and Russia to help us build some robots to kill all the civilians. <laughs> this about the charges against Kenneth. Oh, well, here we go. We support Officer Chaw's constitutionally protected right to present his defense against these charges that stem from this extremely volatile incident that an autopsy concluded took Mr. Moore's life while he was serving time in prison on another matter. He was he was outside walking to his house. Uh, he wasn't in prison, but sure. What? That statement doesn't make any sense. <laughs> R r like, l l l it hurts my brain for the process. This, this, this right here, <laughs> like, yo, like, uh, you know, we're pro union here, okay? <laughs> what the fuck are you talking about? Wait, I got to read this extremely what? volatile incident that an autopsy concluded took Mr. Moore's life while he was serving time in prison on another. He was. At his house. What the fuck are you talking about? <laughs> <laughs> like, why is with his so, wait, wait. <laughs> so the autopsy took Mr. Moore's life while he was in jail. Why were you standing on the on the steps of his house? Like you guys just can't yo, just hold the L, nigga. Hold the <laughs> fucking L. Our guy fucked up. We're sorry this happened. 
Moving on now. You can't even say that. Yo, they just threw a bunch of, they threw 35 words together that had nothing to do with the other words that they were saying <laughs> the next two. This is the craziest. Make this make sense. This is like playing Scrabble or some shit right here. <laughs> Yo, sorry. A fucking word jumble puzzle. <laughs> Yo, yo, the guy, the guy that released a <laughs> statement, he was doing the Sunday crossword puzzle at the same time. <laughs> what the fuck this are you talking about? So, Andrea, Officer Cha, is he facing other charges here? Yo, the, the point is like that, that was jumbo. Is he getting charged with something other shit? Because that was garbage. The other charges here. <laughs> <laughs> Yes, he's facing charges of assault with a semi-automatic firearm, Allen, as well as infliction of great bodily injury. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Right. Andrea Borman. Yeah. I like how that jumbo word, reading that shit. Is these people getting charged with other shit? Because that was that was bullshit right there. Because that if yo, they yo, that nigga should get another charge because his union can't put words together in a sentence. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you know, and Again, like I don't I don't want to unfairly characterize all police officers, but yo, all you pro cops guys, you saw on the screen what the fuck I just saw. <laughs> you know this shit don't make no sense. Come on, son. Come on. So I want so I want to end with this crazy thing. So mind you, we just had the first cop, the second cop in San Francisco history being charged with killing somebody finally. You just had another guy who who was about to be charged? He was about to be charged for being assaulting for assaulting three officers. Somehow he's going to get charged for it. So what? So what happens? What's the public discourse in San Francisco? The allegedly hippie, happy city. Uh, this is what's going on in San Francisco. What we call the DA campaign, which has been hit with ethics complaints over alleged ad violations. So they're actually trying to recall the DA, uh, DA, um, for what he's doing. Ad right violations. Now. So, um, so they recall. They recall. Chelsea Bourdain campaigns sixteen thousand a month. Sixteen thousand dollars a month. Spokesperson is the only person who appears in their latest ghastly mailer. And the local Democratic Party has filed a complaint that is a campaign violation. Um, so they found an ad that they put out an ad that primarily features its own campaign staff. In particular, the ad's primary speaking role was sent, was went to Andrea Shorter. Who we call is being paid sixteen thousand dollars a month to act as a spokesperson. Um, so they found this one one Negro um, <laughs> to the to, to say that you know uh, leading Democrats are unhappy with the DA. The only person they present makes sixteen thousand a month working for the campaign. She's the only person who doesn't like what the DA is doing. <laughs> Let me see if I get this straight. <laughs> okay. Because a lot of uh, the the spaces that I inhabit in 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 on social media, yeah, that are not on this side of, of the political spectrum where we now sit, right? This says leading Democrats, side. mind you. This okay. is leading Democrats unhappy. They they're leading the recall. Right, right, so. right, right. That, that's that's yeah, yeah. that's where I'm going. That's where yeah, I'm going yeah. with this. Okay. Yeah. There are a lot of black people that are unhappy with the way that other black people vote because they see. In, in their mind, Democrats don't serve black people. Democrats, they fish for the black vote and then do nothing for black people. And they've shown I mean, that I mean, time I mean, and time and time proves, and time this again. This point right here with this shit. You know, like. Now you're talking about one of the few district attorneys in the country that are holding police officers accountable for assaulting and or killing colored people. And you're trying to get them out because... Who's in an ad campaign? <laughs> Who are you serving? <laughs> so this Holy what Holy fuck, guy! So oh this is, my god! So this is a story that Dr. Regina's family. I just went down the rabbit hole and I saw this this the shit storm was happening around it. You know, it's crazy to see this. Um, so they're mailing this all across the country. I mean, all across. I have fought for criminal justice reform and victims' rights in San Francisco for over 20 years. His refusal to do his job is devastating our city. So this is Andrea Shorter, victims' rights advocate, who's getting crazy money for doing this. That's six. Look at look at the uh, no 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 don't go nowhere. No. Scroll down. <laughs> look at look look at the uh, the credit for the photo. <laughs> <laughs> Ha, 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 ha.
<laughs> You're talking about one of the few DAs that are holding police officers accountable for harming civilians of color. This is your Democratic Party in San Francisco right now. And she's and, and so then she's featured in uh, an ad. She's featured in another pamphlet. Um, Andrea Shorter has been a fighter for San Francisco women for over 20 years. This is like, this is fucked up shit that they're doing here. Fucked up shit. Wow. Advocate for women and mothers? How dare you? This is a shit people fucking hate, yo. Um, I have no words for what, what, what I'm looking at this. And so it's just one person who's getting paid $16,000 to try to get rid of a DA that already um, uh, did the, like we said, the first, the second officer in San Francisco history to be charged with voluntary manslaughter. You have the, the um, assault that got, uh, assault charges that got thrown out. And they're trying to throw this person out of office um, by using a black woman. Um, it's uh, it, it's it's in it's insane. It's so it's, that, it's up. And the thing is, you're you're, you're starting to see, especially that's nasty, that's nasty cops. That's beyond cops. That's nasty. Yeah, I mean, it, it always comes cops. back to politics as usual, right? Yeah, yeah. Um, and the thing is, you're starting to see more and more black people, especially with this upcoming election cycle coming up, uh, the midterms, um, you know, the Democrats are gonna fail the midterms. And we yeah. heard James from the internet talk about this from an economic standpoint, but when you're talking about the Rona response, when you're talking about the economy, when you're talking about all these motherfucking promises that were made, and, and, the, and the DNC is infamous for this, every time they get a president in the White House, there's all these promises about the, what they're going to do for the people, and they find excuses to not get shit done. And, you know, it, it, it's become so, somewhat obvious, at least obvious to me, that, you know, Democrats didn't really intend to do anything different than what was already done. They could just use cinema and mansion as scapegoats and then say, well, you know, we were going to try to do stuff for the American people, but... It was just one or two people, and, and that's people. why. Yeah. Right? It was just these one or two people, right? Now, you had Donald Trump, you know, all manners of, uh, what, what, what is the presidential decree that they call it? Executive order? What do you mean? Executive order, right? Yeah. He did a whole bunch of executive orders, right? There are a whole he's, bunch of things that the government that is in power right now he could was doing have been the most, doing to help doing the people. He was doing the most demonic executive orders too, like banning people from this country, you know, like Muslim ban. He did, uh, you know, all kinds of stuff. But you know, we, we're not having that. The opposite. You can have the opposite executive orders, you know. The, yeah, yeah, that that actually help people. But no, that's too difficult, right? Yeah. So, you know, to me, it just seems like again, people believe that the right wing and the left wing are just parts of the same bird. Yeah. Um, and you know, when you look at stuff like this. You know, I don't want to hear about I don't want to I don't want to see the Kente cloth kneeling. I never want to see that again. I never yeah. want to see it again, because when it comes down to it. We, you know, we don't even know which way that D.A. in San Francisco, which way he rolls. Yeah. But he actually took action yeah. that could put himself in danger, because yeah. guess who is responsible for the security of the of the district attorney? The yeah. same officers that he's holding accountable. Yeah. But he's looking oh, at but that. you don't like who he's using in an ad campaign. I mean, no, you're talking about recalling him. That's the yeah, recall. they, they don't like who he's using in an ad campaign, and you want to get him out of there when he's actually doing his job. Yeah. Insane. But the ad said that leading Democrats want him out. That's the thing. That's what that's the leading Democrats and black women want him out. We're <laughs> just like <laughs> like you know, the only they seem like the only district attorney that's gonna that's gonna fight to hold the cop accountable that kills your son. You want him gone? Yeah. All <laughs> right. Yep. That's so, how you know this shit is rigged somewhere. I don't I, I don't have my finger on it, but it, it smells fucked up. And now I don't I don't look at black people that say, you know what? Maybe we should defect. Maybe we should take our our uh, our votes elsewhere. Now I'm I'm not so certain that. Uh, 
you know, you know, you know, just vote blue, just vote blue, just vote blue. Well, what the fuck is blue doing for you? Yeah, we need we, we need something else needs to happen. It needs to happen fast. And I'm not sure it's going to happen fast. <laughs> no, so that's the problem. <laughs> so so that's that's a crazy, nasty, bad cops. But also it had some good good endings. We had cops being charged and cops charges being thrown away. So it's not a, it's a bittersweet story in a lot of ways. So um, so that's you can follow Black Power Magic Hour on Twitter, 